Welcome to PM Express Business Edition. The debate about the current state of the economy and whether it is really recovering or maybe it's just an end time soon. Or the fact that things may be getting out of hand. Well, today, Vice President Dr. Mohamed Obamia gave a lecture about the state of the economy, necessary data to support his claim that things are indeed getting better. But away from the lecture, what are the real issues on the ground? And does it support current happenings in the economy, businesses, and all those things out there? Well, all these issues wrapped up here on PM Express as I engage an economist and also a business person from industry and as economic advisor, Dr. Gideon Buako will be my guest in studio. On Zoom, I'll be engaging, of course, uh, Dr. Humphrey Yimdake. He is the president of the Association of Ghana Industries. And Professor Eric Osei he is an economist, as we talk about the economy, the state, and also the chairman of the economic advisory team as well, and the current state of the economy, and what are the real issues on the ground. This and all those issues wrapped up on PM Express Business Edition. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition as we talk about the economy and what the Vice President, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, and also Chairman of the Economic Management Team, saying about the economy. But after all these lectures, some will also say that what are the real issues on the ground and how is that impacting on the operations of businesses and also in your pocket as well. But let's get some clarity on some of the things the Vice President spoke about as you'll also be engaging uh, Dr. Gideon Boako. He's an economic advisor to the Vice President and also Dr. Humphrey Ayimdake. He is President of AGI and also Professor Eric Osesibi. He is an economist. Well, we'll hear from the business groups and the economist whilst you also get some understanding also from the cabinet of the Vice President. And Doc, thank you uh, so much for your time and I appreciate your time. It's been, a, it's been quite a tough day for you, days before and even today as well. I'm glad you know. <laughs> well, tell us, how, 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 how tough or how, how rough has it been putting together all these things, uh, double checking, because don't forget that they'll be doing the fact checking as well to make sure that what the Vice President has put out was really data on the ground. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you that it's quite a, a demanding exercise, mm. but uh, it's something that we've committed ourselves to do, mm. and it's something that we're doing for uh, mm. some time now. Remember, the vice president is quite data savvy. Mm. Um, he likes to play with data, mm. and that's why he has all these team of uh, scholars and economists around him, young people, mm. and um, who are also interested in working with the data. So when it comes to the terrain of working with data and analyzing statistical um, figures, that's, mm. that's our area. Mm. So mm. We, we enjoy doing it. Mm. So um, uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's been tough and rough for us. Um, we, we owe it a duty to assist the president mm. through the vice president mm. to make sure that the mandate that Ghanaian people have given the president mm. As well, exercise, mm. and that's mm. what we. And as we speak right now, he's the acting president. I stand to be corrected on that. Yeah, per the uh, <laughs> dictates of the constitution, <laughs> when see. the president is not around, the vice president acts mm. instead. Mm. So that's that's the case. I mean, and, and still back on the data issues because there have been some times in the past where there have been some data put out, and after the lecture, people have come to challenge the data, and that's why I was asking that this time, uh, have we crossed the T's and dot all the eyes that? These are indeed the real issues on the ground. Oh, I mean, to the best of our ability and knowledge, um, that, that's it. Insofar as it's an academic exercise, uh, you will definitely finish and uh, some T's and I's um, uh, are being corrected here and there. I don't think there's any professor in this world who mm. write a thesis and mm. nobody will have comments about it. Mm. And so much as we believe that um, we've been able to put everything together, um, if one way or the other, somebody identifies fault and it's a genuine mistake, we will admit. But mm -hmm. as I sit here, I don't see any uh, mistake in the presentation that the vice president made. Are we? Otherwise, uh, it's proven mm. uh, to us. Are we going to see, and, and that's some questions that people have asked themselves, that at any time that there is a challenge, we see the, the vice president waiting for a while and then has to be a public lecture. Whilst 
there are several engagement opportunities that he could have addressed these issues that you want to have a public lecture to address things that are happening in the economy? Oh, no. I mean, um, week after week, day after day, the vice president speaks. Um, we, we work with the vice president. But not being heavy on the economy, some no, will no, say. No, it, no. It, it, it depends on where you see. That is why people were even see. asking whether he's because, uh, because, taking an a wall or something. Because I can show the calendar of the vice president to you, and mm. his whole life is engaged the whole of the year, from now to December. I see. The vice president knows what he has to do tomorrow, the next day, the next week. And so throughout the year, I mean, the vice president has been speaking in no less than 20 different but he was silent fora. on the economy no you see it it depends on the publicity you understand i mean vice president attends different programs last week or so he was in kumasi to commission sino hydro projects and other projects he went to Volta region the previous week to commission supply so he attends different programs and delivers different speeches but what, whatever he speaks about is occasioned by the theme for the program that is attending. Mm. And depending on the theme, today he may speak about exchange rate matters, tomorrow he may speak about something else. But because these programs are not publicized mm. as widely as these one-off lectures that sometimes he makes in a year. Remember, he doesn't make these one-off lectures multiple times in a year, even in opposition. Mm. A lot of the time, there are campaign platforms that he will speak. But once in a while, he will organize a lecture, let's say, at a university campus, and then make sure that one is widely publicized. That does mm. not in a way suggest that is the only statement or speech the vice president has mm. made. So it, it depends on the level of publicity and the interest of the public in the subject he's addressing at a particular time. Other than that, Vice President Mahmoud Baumia has been the most outspoken and vociferous mm. vice president we have ever produced ever since I, I grew up. And so the, 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 the whole question of, oh, he's been quite, those are politically tainted mm. you know, messages. Yeah. And we take them in good faith. Other than that, the vice president has been speaking, attending programs, I mean, delivering uh, statements and, and speeches. Sometimes he talks about, as I remember two weeks ago or so, he spoke at a for forum and he spoke about the exchange rate, but because mm. it was not widely publicized. Mm. People may not see it as uh, something that he has committed to do deliberately compared mm. to these one-off lectures. Remember in 2019, before we, were about, we, were exit, we came to exit the IMF program, there was a whole lot of uncertainty in the system. The city was falling. 3rd April 2019, that is when he led the first ever EMT town hall meeting. Mm. It was one off for the year, mm. widely publicized. I think 2017, there was a program yeah. with Joy FM, the 100 Days Achievements, yeah. widely publicized. That was that for the year. 2020, remember he did this lecture on the closing argument some few weeks before the elections. Mm. And last year, he did a lecture with Ashesa University on digital economy. So every year, he takes like one opportunity to do a lecture to talk about broad range of mm. issues that is widely published. But beyond this, he goes about his duties, delivers speeches at different forums and mm. all of mm. that. A again, let's look at the, the, the timing as well. I mean, some have said that the vice president came out to speak on this lecture when things were fairly stabilizing, when the city was doing yo-yo and investors were reacting. Again, some said the vice president was quiet. It looks like he you, came out in this know, lecture you know, when things are, are fairly no, 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 stabilizing. No, no. You see, Therefore, you see, you see, the whole concept of economic management, and especially on exchange rate matters, unless you don't understand the mm. exchange rate market, noise, the exchange rate market doesn't want noise. You see. So if you are an economist and you're managing an economy, and there seems to be some level of turbulence, in the exchange rate market, you don't hurry to create noise in the system. Mm. Because mind you, the whole exchange rate exposures somehow thrive on noise and the responses to impulses. So you have to be careful that if you are a leader, especially when you're the chairman of the economic management team and you see uh, your CD, your currency tumbling in a way, mm. you need to sit back, do the proper diagnosis, identify where the cause is, and see how you deal with that. What Ghanaians were looking for is solution. Mm. So you need to sit in the boardroom, brainstorm 
and then put out measures that will address the situation. It's not a matter of coming out to speak and making noise. And in, in that act, you make mistakes. Remember in the past, it happened during President Muhammad's time. We had all these arguments about the exchange rate depreciation, the score by jobs and all of that. When you create all this noise, when the market gets indication that you don't have a solution, and that even the cause of the problem you're talking about is wrong. When the market gets indication that there's exchange rate depreciation, free fall of the currency, and your diagnosis is wrong, the market gets the impression that these are not good managers, and so we have to panic and our certainty mm. exacerbates. That is not what you need. Mm. What this government decided to do in the midst of the challenges that we saw, quite though ephemera, we decided to sit back, identify the problems, proffer the solutions, and then talk less, let it you, happen, then you can talk you, about you it. You believe that the things that he's professed, the things that you have uh, put in place is working? Or we have seen visible signs, mm -hmm. right, right from, from the day Bank of Ghana came with their policy announcement of an uh, uh, upward adjustment of 250 basis points on the monetary policy rate, to the time the finance minister spoke and mentioned the interventions government is making, then the president spoke at the State of the Nation address, even at the time, when the vice president gave indication that he was also going to speak, the market be became settled. And we saw the effect and the impact on the exchange rate market. Mm. The rates that we were seen as 8.7, 8.8 quickly dropped. And now we are around 7 point something. That is not the best that we want though. Mm. But you see some level of calmness restored to the exchange rate market. That is how you deal with exchange rate problems. The exchange rate market doesn't want noise. Mm. If you are not an economist, you don't understand the exchange rate market, you don't understand news impact analysis on the exchange rate market, you go and make noise, it creates problems for you, and then you're Do you think that this noise. presentation, that was, that was closely monitored by other actors as well, will further bring about some market confidence Absolutely, absolutely. The fact that the vice president even decided to speak, if the Ghanaian market were that efficient, you see, your official market hypothesis will tell you, yeah. if you have that efficient market, and you have a figure like the vice president of a country who is the economic management team chairperson, mm. has a strong background in economics, has been a deputy governor be before in charge of the currency and everything, and says, I'm going to speak to talk about how this will be solved. Definitely, the market will pick it up. Mm. And the market response will be positive. So you expect the market and, and, to respond, and, 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 even if it's not locally as well the offshore investors to respond to some of the things that he spoke about and the, the outlook as well for the economy. How do you gauge even the local sentiment? Well, I, I'm the, yet to get the, details, and that's how we'll be bringing exactly. in an economist I don't want to and also here. Association of Ghana Industries to, to, to respond to look at the but bigger I think, picture. I think the reactions by Ghanaians towards the vice president's presentation so far has been positive. According to Dr. Gideon Barco. Has been positive. According to Dr. Gideon Barco. That, that's fine. Okay. But I've, 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 I've seen what is going on in social media also. There's that kind of positive reaction towards the vice president's presentation. So locally, people are seeing that, look, okay, this is the situation. We understand it this way. So it means all is not lost, even though we have some challenges. So the market will also pick it up. The market will see that from this statement from Bank of Ghana to the finance minister, to the president and the vice president, the chairman of the economic management team, there is some level of understanding of the situation. And that brings comfort to the market. Mm. So I'm very, very optimistic that the market is going to be continue mm, to be calm, mm, as, mm, as we say mm. today. I'll be getting your thought on the debt issue that he sought to justify about where they were advanced and all the rest. But getting from you, Doc, that he being the, the chairman of the economic management team, it means that no major economic policy takes place in this country without he being aware of, right? No, no, the vice president is a key and integral part. So he gives passage or approves most of these major economic now, Let issues. me tell you how the economic management team works. I mean, at, at, at the apex level, it's cabinet, okay? The economic management team is more or less some sort of winnowing process or, or committee mm, mm. that looks at some of the issues. No, it's not every issue. But that, the, the that, major issues, it's, at it's, least, it's you every would, issue would that, give a thumbs up to it's it. It's not every issue that has to come to the economic management. Issues that are presented to the economic management team 
they look at them in their own understanding, invite stakeholders to come and make presentations, and they take decisions and pass on to cabinet. Mm. And once cabinet approves, it comes. But whatever decision that this government has made is a decision of government backed by right. actors the, in government, the, including, including the, the vice chairman president. Of the, Absolutely. It will be, hold on, I want to bring in an economic professor, Eric Osses, to be as well, and also bring in Dr. Humphrey Ayim Dake. He is the president of AGN. I mean, as an economist, I mean, for you, do these things help in terms of the confidence that you want? Or it still kind of muddies the waters, uh, Prof. Uh, Eric Osses, to be? Yeah, um, George, thank you. Um, definitely, I mean, absolutely, it helps a lot. Uh, you know, as um, Dr. Bopo mentioned, in economic management, information uh, plays a critical role uh, in the sense that people want credible information uh, to plan, uh, to actually uh, forecast, uh, to internalize it in their costing, in their pricing, and I mean, in so many ways, in their speculative activities. So at any given time, they want credible information. And so uh, when you don't put out information, and it's not just about information, the information has to be credible, it has to be factual, it has to be empirically ver verifiable. You should be able to find out whether this information is true or not. If the market finds out that this information that is being churned out is false, is not credible, you as a government actually cause uh, reputational damage to yourself. You know, you fall definitely into a trap of... What and and call, Prof, what that, 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 that is more of a caution from your end, if I get you, that they make sure yeah. that whatever they are putting out yeah. is the, the right situation on the ground. Credible, yes, you find yourself in a trap that it will be difficult for you to get out. You, you get into reputational damage so that I mean, next time when you speak, really nobody takes you serious. And so I think that information has to be credible. And from what I've seen thus far, uh, given this lecture that uh, Dr. Baumian gave, the facts that have been given, I mean, it, he, speak, he spoke to facts. And the facts are all verifiable. Uh, you can take the Bank of Ghana uh, recent uh, uh, MPC announcements, the data that was produced. Uh, if you take the uh, Fitch and Moody's uh, reports, the data have been produced. So these are all verifiable facts that we can all go and check. And I've just been doing my cross-checking, and I've realized that most of the things that you know were put out were credible. They were factual. You can actually go and check and to see that indeed whether inflation has not been rising, Indeed, whether if you will not find before 2019, you know, inflation got into single digits, and that is around 7.5, the average mm -hmm. um, about 7.6% over the, uh, the uh, three previous years. And you could clearly see that interest rates, you know, was trending downward. So um, it is difficult to debate, you know, to uh, say anything other than what has been presented, of course. The reason behind the numbers, I mean, can be debatable. It's economics. Everyone, mm, you know, mm. obviously will have a different opinion. It's just as we often say that economic opinions are like gnosis. Mm. Everyone has his or hers. You understand, you know. But then facts are facts. Uh, there's no way you can deny facts so long as it is written in black and white. So in that sense, I think that such information you know, it's critical. And if you just look at the trends over the last couple of days when government started putting out information and uh, rolling out rafts uh, uh, of measures uh, to control inflation and to stem the exchange rate, you can clearly see the positive results. Uh, the, the rate at which the city is depreciation, uh, depreciating has slowed quite considerably. Uh, you look at even Ghana spreads, right, the sovereign spread. It has narrowed considerably over the last couple of days, mm. uh, largely because of some of the information and the measures that government has put out. So in my view, I think it is uh, necessary, it is critical that uh, from time to time the government comes out to tell Ghanaians the true state of the economy, speaking to facts, not 
penned so much and providing the explanation, the underlying reasons why we are where we are. Mm. And mm. I think mm. that uh, uh, these are something that we want uh, to be able to build confidence and to you know promote credibility and transparency in the macroeconomic management. Prof, uh, in, in trying to assure that this data and this information and presentation cuts across all quarters and appeals to everyone are acceptable. There are some who are worried about the environment or the event itself as more clouded in the political party event. You're trying to win over investors, you're trying to win over the business community as well. Is that worrying? Should we be concerned about that? Or it's about the information and the data? Well, I, I don't think uh, we should worry so much about where that information is delivered. Uh, for me, my key issue will be whether that information is credible or not, because information travels and travels very fast. Really, it doesn't matter where it was made, so long as it is make, being made by a credible person or person in good stature in a society, the market will launch on it. And so if the uh, vice president go out there even if um, he's standing on political platform and make statements that cannot be verified, uh, that are far from truth, uh, the market will react. You know, you may deceive the market in a short period of time, but over time, if the truth started coming out, you know, the market will react, and that could cause you a reputational damage. And I don't think the vice president wants to do that. And so. Uh, you could clearly see that the the drafters of the speech or the uh, this very detailed report carefully carefully uh, considered that and ensured that whatever data that they are putting out there uh, is credible, is verifiable, and it's uh, something that really uh, is, is the case, uh, so to speak. Bro, so but, I mean, of course, we can talk about the underlying reasons. But, Pro, some will also say that it's about the bread and butter. I mean, I remember in the past there was a political platform where someone made a comment that na inflation ye be I mean, if, if inflation numbers are even stable, if the currency numbers are even stable, there are some who are saying that, yeah, macro numbers could be good and all the rest, but the situation on the ground is that sure prices are expensive. Inflation, things are expensive on the ground. Anytime that person or I go to the market, I see different prices being affixed on products. And that is the economy, and not what managers are saying at the top line level. Absolutely. I mean, that is the current reality. That is the case. I and mean, are we seeing that right are now? Are we, are we seeing that right now, Prof? We, 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 we all acknowledge, we all acknowledge that this economy is under strain. Uh, prices are skyrocketing. Uh, we see the city depreciating. Are so fast and the pass through effect is high. Uh, we've seen interest rates started to uh, uh, move up. These are realities, all right? But the question is whether this is unique to Ghana. Um, I mean, all over the world, as now, many countries are experiencing the same situation as we experience it. We have global, you know. Um, supply chain disruptions, uh, energy prices going up, triggering high inflationary levels, uh, monetary policy tightening, beginning to show up in high interest rates across the globe, you know, shortages of some uh, food items, and all of that is happening, you know. And so um, one could say that, well, the macroeconomic does not reflect in people's pocket, but there's a close linkage to that. You know, if you don't manage the macroeconomic environment well, it will definitely trigger to the micro, which mm. is the one that affects your pocket. So um, this thing happening, uh, we know where they are coming from. Of course, there are internal factors that uh, re uh, really uh, can uh, cause some of these things to happen. There are also external factors, right? So when it happens, it takes one to look at where are the causes? How do we manage these causes? Uh, because quite a number of them are shock to the economy. There's nothing that one can do. It has happened. For example, the COVID, it happens. We all 
and attest to that the fact that the COVID happened and the economy slowed down considerably. I mean, employment, people lost their job, uh, uh, businesses closed down, uh, we all sat home for a number of days, government has to, you know, ramp up expenditure, revenue falls. These are gospel truths. Uh, they, 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 they are, nobody is making them up. And across the globe, you look at uh, UK, the UK inflation increasing, uh, the uh, USA inflation now getting to about 8%, uh, percent, the highest in the three decades or so. So the, the, the difficulty is everywhere. What matters is how do we navigate this difficult situation? How do we assure the people that indeed something is being done uh, to ensure that the large fiscal deficit that have been recorded over the last three years, we are working to bring it down. We are working hard to bring inflation down. We are working hard to make sure that the city uh, mm. stabilizes. And uh, this is what is important. So mm. for me, I want to, much as we're talking about the fact that it is a global uh, in nature, we must also look at the internal mechanism. Mm. You know, how do we build a resilient economy to be able to withstand mm. some of these global shocks? Mm. Because it is mm. not going to go away. Are we going to, it's almost like a cycle kind of situation mm, mm. and it is going to come back again so that the, the, the conversation now is how do we build an economy that is resilient enough to be able to withstand some of these shocks mm. when they emerge mm, mm. and so our our exchange rates you know we've seen it depreciating over and over this is not the first time a few years ago 2014 it depreciated by about 32 to 39 percent. In fact, the end of the year for 2014, the city depreciated by 39 percent. Okay. Uh, now we are complaining it has depreciated about 15.7 percent. Assuming that at that time we actually put very Amazing solid complete. measures, you know, together that uh, uh, would have, you know, solidify our productive base. You know, ensure we have export competitiveness. Okay. Where we have built okay. enough reserve buffers and all of that. Perhaps we may not have been experienced. Okay. Experience. Okay. Prof, hold yeah. on there. Let me let me try and bring in the business community as well. And uh, Doctor uh, mm -hmm. Humphrey Yimdake, he's the president of the Association of uh, Ghana Industries. For you as business, the business community in the manufacturing sector, is it about listen about the real issues on the ground or what is being discussed at the macro level? It's a combination, um, uh, George, as captured by Prof, there's a relationship between the macro and the micro, and therefore the two go hand in hand. Uh, and therefore, um, the confidence that you bring to the economy regarding the variables that play out, i.e. the inflationary rates, policy rates, the exchange rate, which is one critical one, and that, therefore, for you to do that, you need a macro to um, stabilize the exchange rate and that of the inflationary rate is critical. And I, as much as that of the fuel, which is strategic in terms of uh, lubricating uh, operations, both in the uh, transport industry and manufacturing industry, is very, very critical. So there is a close relationship, as stated by Prof, and uh, I aside with him on that score. Uh, going forward beyond that, yes, uh, you will see that the uh, vice president extensively tried to cover uh, all grounds and uh, indicated a number of steps that going forward uh, they seek to um, deploy to restore confidence. Yes, the role of the Bank of Ghana uh, preceding the vice president's statement uh, restored some uh, reasonability in terms of the exchange rate and uh, some reasonable confidence. However, with the delivery of the vice president, uh, document one will ask are these uh, interventions uh, short term are they medium term will they give us a uh, significant hope that we could uh, focus and plan very well into the uh, medium to long term then it goes back into the structure of the economy that he also spoke to and he outlined a number of uh, projects that they are running that gives you the future and the hope Nonetheless, one would then um, drive or uh, delve a bit, delve a bit into the interventions that he spelled out. Are they significant to 
bring about a structural transformation. And as captured by Prof. Asibi right now, that the resilience of the economy into the years is what assures the industrialist or the business owner a significant confidence to do significant investment into the years to transform the economy and be assured of returns on investment into the years. And therefore, looking into the outline of uh, the vice president presentation, well segmented though, uh, factual as captured by the data as we see, uh, AGI team is here to do further details on the entire presentation within the uh, days, uh, days coming. So we'll, to, to date, uh, beyond the DOG's uh, intervention, uh, seriously on the exchange rate front, uh, the promise of $2 billion uh, to show the uh, CD uh, was stated by the uh, Bank of Ghana, and the Vice President uh, retreated the set position and the intervention on the policy rate. But one thing that it, it's a concern, as I read the document, is the uh, well captured statement of the country not going back to the sovereign sovereign bond in the year 2022. So we'll ask the question, will the said 2 billion intervention be sufficient to hold the city to the rest of the years? Then you flip into the other uh, interventions he seeks to transform the structure of the economy with. And in the industry sector, he insisted on the planting for food and jobs, and if you look into the value chain of the plant for food and jobs, what else do you do after the number of interventions captured, uh, like the uh, irrigation, he captured warehousing, he captured uh, a number of interventions well listed out. However, one concern we bring back to government is, what are you doing with the primary products that are being exported? So he says, I have one district, one factory scattered across the nation that may take advantage of processing. So if we are processing primary product like the soya bean, like cashew, it is a wish that government will figure out how to impose export tariffs on the primary product so that it becomes a disadvantage to export the primary product. Okay. But value addition okay. will be a way forward through the one district, one factory. Mm. In the set document as the vice president presented, I tried to look out for the concern on employment. With the intervention from the Bank of Ghana that brings about contraction on the market, the fallout will be on unemployment. Okay. So what is the intervention? Our prayer is, as I stated, if you take the plant for food and jobs, the tail end, put in some form of restrictions that primary products will be processed and that will create jobs. And then that then leads to structural transformation of the economy. So we urge the vice president that some uh, reflections and the feedback on the monitoring and evaluation of the plant for food and jobs should put some restrictions on the exportation of primary products okay. and let us create jobs and change the structure of the economy. Okay. Okay. Same for the auto industry. Okay. He stated the auto industry, fantastic idea. But the benefit of the auto industry will be seen at the tail end. Okay. And that is where you can tie it into the bauxite uh, and the uh, aluminum integrated project. Okay. Then down okay. Team, you create jobs. Doc, I'll, I'll come back. I'll, I'll come back to you again on your, your final thought in terms of the outlook. But uh, Doc, you, you've heard from an economist, you've heard from industry as well. Does it give you some comfort, some excitement, or listen, there's still a lot of work to be done away from the lecture. Uh, there's no denying the fact that we still have a long way to go. Uh, the vice president had made that admission in his presentation that despite all the plans and programs government has put um, together, we still have a lot of you know uh, tracks to cover. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with all of them that indeed um, the presentation that was made by the vice president by and large has significant impact mm -hmm. in terms of the the, the atmosphere. Is it's, it's early days? Is early days and, yet? And, um, and the data, as they have all agreed, is early days yet. Are verifiable. I agree with the point that he made that um, in a situation where Bank of Ghana takes a monetary policy stance mm. to tighten the, the, the system, 
it has its own consequences of uh, crowding out the private sector because government short-term interest rates are going to go up mm. and people may find it so comfortable mm. to, to lend to government and that has its own effect on jobs. Mm. But I think what we need to understand is that every single policy by the BOG is mm. geared towards achieving a particular uh, aim. Mm. And the Bank of Ghana has been very consistent right from 2017 until recently, they had reduced the monetary policy rate by over 11 percent, as the vice president mentioned. Even at the time that people felt it had to go up, they were on the uh, decline, re reduction path. But you see, when you have your exchange rates suffering some short-term turbulence on account of the fact that um, you're suffering from rollover risk, that mm. is foreign investors mm. are not rolling over the investment in the country. You need to do something, especially when you look at what happened on the U.S. market, mm. that the Fed increased the interest rate in the, on the U.S. market, and so f people felt comfortable repatriating to, to the states, and also on account of the uncertainties that were in Parliament and all of that. Bank of Ghana had to make that intervention to up the monetary policy rate to give some level of comfort to the investors who mm. are repatriating to see that okay we can now roll over because there has been some increase in the short-term interest rate and definitely once you achieve that objective bank of ghana does their monetary policy committee meetings and comes with announcement attend every quarter or so and so as and when bank of ghana looks at the situation and sees that we've been able to achieve the purpose for which we set out to increase this monetary policy rate they will take a further decision to make sure mm. um, the other mm. aspects of the economy mm. is balanced. So mm. it's a whole uh, mm. a, a mm. decision that had mm. to be taken, taken other considerations uh, on mm. board. And so it, it's not too inimical as, mm. as people. Mm. The with. vice president in the presentation talked about the justification for going digital and a lot of work that has been done over the years. And, but one thing that was a lot of concern for a lot of people was was silent on the e levy as a chairman of the economic management team we're expecting that we'll hear from him on his thoughts on this policy and whether it's needed right now does that send a signal that he's not for this policy what's your definition of silence we didn't hear the vice president talk that's, about the e levy that's not true we can go through this speech and i'll show you where he mentioned e -levy. where he said that it was needed now and it's good you see, you see um the conversation around e levy before the passage of of, of the bill mm. and today are not the same. Prior to that, government needed to make a case, justify why e levy was necessary, try to explain it to the understanding of people. We've gone through that process. Today, where we are today, we have a lot of task handles, some of which had been introduced by previous mm. government, by this government in the past, some of which had been introduced in the 2022, but mm. e levy is part of the task handles that this government has introduced mm. in the 2022 budget. Yeah. And if you listen to the vice president very well, he talked about taxes, taxes that this government had, has either abolished, you, you understand, or reduced. And he talked about taxes that this government has introduced. And e levy was mentioned as and, part and, of the taxes and, 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 and that this do, government Do, do we get the understanding that as a chairman of the economic management team, compared to what he said previously that don't tax mobile money. Now he has revised the statement and then he believes that we need to tax it because we need this money to grow the economy? No, no. You know, um, the, the point that the vice president came from was the fact that maybe two prong. First, you pursue a digitization agenda. And so you may not want to do things that will impose additional burden mm -hmm. by way of course on people who are coming to the platform to, to to participate, to drive that whole digital governance thing. And then also, if you're putting out any policy, you may want to consider the poor and the impoverished, mm. those who may not have the capacity to pay as others may, may, may do. And I think all of that came on board and was part of the broader consideration by government when the E-Levy was introduced. And that is why you see this threshold of uh, 100 cities mm -hmm. exempted or, or that has been exempt from, from, from the, the E-Levy. Of course, there are people who feel, and sometimes we all share in the same opinion, 
that probably the hundred should have gone to two hundred or three hundred. One percent. That one is based on mm. our individual mm. subjective mm. judgments mm. and thinking. Mm. But government looking at the situation also felt that even if we exclude hundred cities, that would be like forty percent, between thirty five percent to forty percent of the people mm. who patronize E levy. And that is quite a sizable figure. Mm. So the whole concept of okay, how do we protect the poor? Okay. And and the, and 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 the half nots in this whole situation of introducing e levy that that decision was taken on board. Mm. And at the end of the day, government through parliament and the generality of Ghanaians, it's not everybody that supports mm. it though, has brought the e levy. Mm. It is part of our task measures that mm. we have. We've crossed the bridge of whether it is good or not good. It has been passed, but, but it's we, important now. Mm as what the citizenry are looking up to. Mm. Okay, government, you've committed to do this. We're going to support you. We will pay. But once we pay, you must put the process from the e-levy to judicial use. So, so, so the understanding now, the vice president has revised his note on the tax no more because of how this tax handle has been implemented, and he is for the e-levy. No, no, like I said earlier, every single decision that government makes, every actor it government is bound by that. And the vice president is a key figure. So he approved of the so, e levy. So it, it's a government decision that is being supported and approved by parliament, of mm. which the vice president is part. Be All of be us because part. people still remember his, his, his yeah, comment in 2000, good. where they said that, do not tax Momo because then you are creaming the little that the poor are making. No, I understand, I understand that ordinarily. Um, so it, now things have changed, right, now yeah, in terms of his stance. Because you, you look at the... Or he has revised his you, notes. You look at the situation that we find ourselves in, and then you see where the balance of risk tilts towards. Mm. And I think the balance of risk tilts towards the fact that government should be able to cut down on borrowing, mm. raise more revenue, and make sure that we are able to take care of a lot of the things that we do so that we don't impose additional burden on us by way of going to the market or going elsewhere to borrow. And so as a country, all of us had to take a decision. Mm. How do we finance most of the projects that we want to do if we don't want government to borrow so much? And of course, TAS is, is part of the measures that government we have to look at. Whichever TAS handle government introduces, as and when they bring them, mm. people will have to debate them. Uh, people will have to assess and analyze them. At the end of the day, if we all decide to pay, what matters most is what government uses that revenue for. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do not have so much problems with paying taxes. It's, it's just sometimes in Africa, certain people are not so sure whether they can trust the political actors to use the, 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 the tax process mm -hmm. uh, for the purpose for which they are intended for. Mm -hmm. That is a key thing. And so for me, once uh, government has gone through the process, parliament has approved it, it is part of our task handles, we are committed to pay. I'm committed to mm, pay, and I'm sure mm. as a law-abiding citizen. I don't you, have a you, choice, you, 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 do yeah, I? Exactly. So once we do that, then we have to hold government accountable mm. to make sure that government uses the proceeds for what we mm. want. Doc, I asked Professor Sibe this question, and whilst this, this lecture was going on, some also see that, Doc, in a lecture in EBD, there are people out there who are complaining about the rising cost of living, the rising prices of fuel, the rising prices of stuff out there. And for them, the best gift the vice president can give them is putting pressure on government to do the right things for their standard of living to improve. That is all. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. That is what I told you from the beginning, that yes, because government will have to be accountable to the people, being accountable is not a matter of picking calculator and accounting balancing situations to see that the finances are okay. But you also need to give information to the people that have ceded their mandate to you. Mm. And so coming out to address issues, explain matters, give messages of hope and comfort is part of the accountability. Not at a political it's, it's, uh, no, 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 program. It's, it's part of the accountable governance process. Mm. That is exactly what the vice president did. We cannot say that we are suffering and so government should not speak. 
The situation is dire, as the vice president admitted. We all go to the market. I buy for you. Was it a, an admission about the current challenging situation yeah, he admitted, that is managed right, by right, the president and the vice right president? Right from the first paragraph of the vice president's presentation, right from the first and second paragraphs, he made that honest admission. I believe that he's that not he having a, a sleepless night. He's having a that, sleepless that, night then. No, he's human. He's a father. He's a Ghanaian. He has parents. He has friends. People test him. People call him. He engages with people. So as he, the he chairman feels, of the economic management team, he, he, he's not he, happy. He feels whatever you and I feel. That is why he mentioned that from Malata market to Techima market to Takrade market second to Pando market to wherever, prices are going up. Mm. This was an honest admission by the vice president. Doc, just a quick second. Let me just get a, a last word in, in a minute uh, from Professor Seisibe and also Dr. Anfiyum Dake. For you, Away from the lectures, for you, what next is most critical for you as an economist in a minute as you round up, please? Well, uh, for me, what is most critical is how do we uh, stabilize the uh, macroeconomic environment today? And then how do we make sure that uh, the welfare of our the people uh, improved, you know? And so we have to look at uh, within government side, uh, what can government do, especially within the expenditure side, uh, because that is one of the elephants in the room. Uh, government has to look at how best to contain expenditure, um, because um, uh, revenue generation is quite difficult. So one of the way to fiscally consolidate is to make sure that you cut down uh, uh, on your expenditure mm, and mm, really mm. embark on some form of expenditure okay. reprioritization. Okay. So it is necessary because not until we are able to do that, we're going to have ourselves in a very difficult situation. So for and you, so it's expenditure, uh, for me, expenditure, expenditure. Sorry, yeah. because of time. It has to be expenditure led, you know, fiscal consolidation mm. at this moment because mm. we are not too sure about what will happen to the revenue. And so we need to make sure that we have handle on this pension. Dr. Hanfi Yimdake, in a minute for you, what next for you, away from this lecture, in a minute? Sustainability of the various intervention leading to structural transformation, food security, which is one thing we need to watch out, because there was a clear admission by the vice president of the cost of fertilizer. And in the planting season, if we do not get it right, we might have situations uh, a year and six months ahead. That is why we asking government to bring in some interventions into the primary products that are being pushed out under okay. the planting for food and jobs so that we do not face food security uh, a year from now because of the planting season. Okay. Sustainability of the various interventions. We know there are a lot of work in progress, but it need to give us situational updates to uh, restore confidence early and the, the interventions of um, uh, the macro uh, activities to okay. make uh, the local investor confident okay. in the macro front in various uh, activities. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doc. And so, Doc, for you, what next? I mean, uh, after this lecture, what next from the vice president in trying to improve my livelihood as a Ghanaian? Yeah, I think we, we don't have any other thing to do than to make sure we do what Ghanaians want. And I think Ghanaians want results. They, they are looking up to seeing the living conditions improved. They are looking up to seeing um, prices on the market, you know, even if they are not coming down, the rate of inflation will not increase at an increasing rate. Uh, they are looking up to seeing that the currency will be well anchored and that we wouldn't see that level of sharp volatility that we saw. Uh, in the last few months. And I think that is what we are committed to do. That is what we've been doing, and we continue to push it further to make sure that at the end of the day, we're able to deliver mm. good results to the good people mm. of this country. The, the Vice President made a quite an interesting statement about they still stand ready to uh, take other measures to stabilize the situation in 30 seconds. For you, what's that, that signal? Yeah, the signal is that there's some level of fluidity in the system in terms of what is happening in the global um, um, world, and that as and when government sees there's a need to loosen or tighten any policy stance, government will come back to the good people of Ghana, make that policy stance 
known to Ghanaians, mm. pick mm. their thoughts, mm. and then mm. come out with, mm. you know, mm. fair judgments at the end of the mm. day. That is exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to say that what we have said today are just okay. finalities. But, more but as and when uh, there is the need to reverse some policies or to we'll push some forward or introduce we'll new ones, we we'll come back and do I it. I know the debate will still go on in your homes and offices about the state of the economy and the state of the vice president's take on the economy. Well, I know the debate will go on and have a great day. It has been PM Express. Thank you, Dr. Gideon Buako, he is an economic advisor to the vice president, Dr. Hanfei Yimdake, president of AGI, and also uh, Professor Sesibe, he is an economist. Thank you so much and have a great day.